All right, for this lesson, we're going to look at the division of rational expressions. Now, the nice thing is when dividing fractions, it is very, 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 very similar to multiplying fractions. We just multiply by the reciprocal. So if I was to divide 7 over 10 and 3 over 14, then the first thing I would do is I would rewrite the division as a multiplication and then take the reciprocal of what comes after the divide sign, 14 over 3. When I do this, then I'm going to do the same thing we were doing with the last case. I'm going to look, is there any common factors? Well, between the 14 and the 10, I can divide them both by 2 to make it 5 and 7. And 7 times 7 is going to give me 49, and 5 times 3 is going to give me 15. Now remember, this only applies to whatever comes directly after the divide symbol. So I'm only going to do it, for example, b to the 9 over 10. The first fraction is going to stay the same. The second fraction, I need the reciprocal. And the third fraction, because it comes after a multiply, stays the same. And then I can do the same process I did in the last case. I can divide both the 6 and the 9 by 3. And that's going to become 2, and that's going to become 3. And I can divide the 10 and the 20 both by 10. And that's going to become 1 and that's going to become 2. Which means that all I'm going to be left with is 2 over, sorry, 5 times 3 times 2 is going to be 30. And in this case, I actually could have done a second step and divided those twos from each other, which means I can even go further and say that's going to be 1 over 15. Now, if I have brackets, we already know that a bracket means that whatever sign is outside is going to apply to everything inside the brackets which means that as soon as I have brackets, I need to take the full reciprocal of everything that exists in here. So that would be the same as 6 over 5 times 10 over 9 times 20 over 1. I also could have simplified inside the brackets and then flipped it as well which is also perfectly acceptable. When I do this, then I'm going to take a look at the 6 and the 9, and that's going to become 2 and 3 again. I'm going to take that 5 and the 10, divide them both by 5, and that's going to become 1 and 2. And this is going to leave me with 2 times 2 times 20 is the same as 80 over 1, 3, and 1, 3. And there's my final answer. When we go to example 2, it wants us to do the same process with variables and simplify it's asking us not to state the restrictions here because we're, we're going to see why in a second. So I'm going to start the same way because I have a divide symbol. I'm going to say it's 16 over a, or sorry, 16a over 9b squared. And I'm going to multiply that by 15b over 32a squared. I'm going to simplify. 
I can divide both these by 16, and that's going to become 1, and that's going to become 2. I can divide both these by a, and that's going to become 1, and that's going to become a. I can divide both these by 3, and that's going to become 3, and that's going to become 5. And I can divide both these by b, and that's going to become 1, and that's going to become b. On the top, I have 1, 1, 5, and 1, just makes 5. And on the bottom, I have 3 and 2, makes 6, and I have an A and a B. For example 2, only flip what comes after the divide, which means that this is going to equal negative 5xy3 over 7xz cubed times 2z over 15x times negative 21z to the 4 over 10 x squared, y squared. If you don't like to do the individual simplifying like this and you find that is a little too confusing, you can feel free to multiply all the way across and then just do your simplifying like that. So if I have negative 5 times 2 times negative 21, that should give me positive 210. I have an x, I have a y to the 3, and I have z, and z to the 4 is z to the 5. On the bottom, if I have 7, 15, and 10, then that's going to give me one thousand and fifty and I'm going to wind up with four x's two y's and three z's and if you prefer doing it this way that's perfectly fine and I can divide both those by 210 and just be left with one and five I take away my x from here, and I'm going to be left with x cubed. I take away y squared from here and here, and I'm going to be left with y on the top. And I'm going to take away z to 3 from here and here, and I'm going to be left with z to the 2 on the top. Remembering that all of these other ones that cancel out would just be 1s. So when I multiply it back out, it's not really going to make a difference. Which means if I have 1, 1, y, and z squared on the top, I have y, z squared. And on the bottom, I have 5x cubed, 1, 1, or 5x cubed. Now the restrictions get a little trickier. This is one of the few ways where multiplying and dividing is different. In fact, dividing is different than any other method that we've looked at. So if I have a over b divided by c over d, then just looking at the first fraction, the non-permissible is going to be that b, the denominator, can't equal zero. In the second fraction, c over d, d, the denominator, can't equal 0. But when I take the steps to simplify, then what happens is I take the reciprocal of what comes after the divide sign, and I wind up with this new reciprocal fraction, d over c. And in this case, c 
can't equal zero because that's in the denominator. Now this is really important because non-permissibles occur anywhere that something is going to wind up being at any point in our simplification process in the denominator. So we always think of non-permissibles in our denominators, but if I have a divide sign, anything that comes after the divide sign, non-permissibles exist in the denominator and in the numerator, because when I take the reciprocal, that numerator is also going to become a denominator. So, if I'm stating the restrictions from example two, then I can see that I have a restriction here for B, I have the same restriction here for B, but I also have an A that's going to wind up being in the denominator, so B can't equal zero, but A also can't equal zero. When I look at the next example, I have X and Z can't equal zero because they exist in the denominator. But then after the divide sign, I have a Y in the numerator, which means that X can't equal zero z can't equal zero, and from up here, y also can't equal zero, because it's going to wind up being in the denominator at some point. So if it is ever in the denominator, it is a restriction. When I get to example four, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double check for those restrictions. So I'm gonna highlight that there would be restrictions here, here, I, here. I'm not going to state this one again because I already have it right here. And I have a restriction up here. So it might not be a bad idea right from the get-go to list out, and sometimes you'll need to factor down, to list out what your restrictions would be. So in this case, I know that x cannot equal 2, negative 3, 0, or because of this one up here, negative 1. Then I'm going to take the reciprocal of what comes after the divide sign. x plus 1 over x minus 2, x plus 3 multiplied by x over x plus 3 and 2 and x plus 1. And because they're multiplied, now I can just cancel out if it's in the numerator and in the denominator. And I'm left with x over 2, x minus 2, where x cannot equal, as we stated up here, 2, negative 3, 0, or negative 1. 